Hi everyone. Last time I was giving you some really incredible revelations from the Holy Spirit. And the more revelations that unfurl before my eyes, the more I'm able to understand other scriptures because it gives more details about what really has been happening in the scriptures and how it applies to the time of Jacob's trouble with Israel and God's dealing with his own people there. In my last two videos, I was telling you about the scarlet colored beast in the wilderness and the Hebrews played the scarlet harlot against God in the wilderness with a red heifer overlaid with gold, the golden calf that Moses burned and ground to powder and then he threw it in the spring water and then he made them drink it. And how significant the red heifer ceremony will be with a replacement king that makes the covenant with the Jews worldwide stronger that they originally had with God and they believe that they are being told by Maimonides, Maimon, which is Mammon, which incidentally I did a research on this to see if it was the same thing as Mammon. And they are one in the same and it's a demon. So that's really um, very important information. And what I wanted to say in this video to carry over from the last two videos about um, Sin was the name of the crescent moon god on Mount Sinai. And that's where the name Sinai came from. The first part of the word is Sin. And when I talked about the golden calf, being called sin and it had the crescent moon horns that form the crescent moon and by the way obama wore a costume with the crescent moon horns so we know whose side he is really on no he's not the antichrist but he is helping set up the antichrist system the one world global government there's many antichrists and they're all setting up this system that will be under a king that's a usurper king. And so they plan to put this one person on the throne eventually. So what I wanted to say is the scarlet colored beast overlaid with gold in the wilderness named Sin. And Jesus was confronted by the... Pharisees and Sadducees bringing the harlot in front of him to, to test him, it says. That's because their ancestors had played the scarlet harlot against him, and they wanted to see what he would say about it. So he wrote with his finger on the ground, and I have this incredible story in my book about what he wrote. Anyway, let's put it this way. It was a love message. So here's the thing, the golden calf, the red heifer overlaid with gold, the scarlet colored beast, and the harlot riding the beast, these are all depictions of various, like over time, these various replications of this same deity popped up with different names. In Egypt, this was depicted as the bull god Apis with the horns, the crescent moon horns. Later on, well, we had the, the red heifer, the golden calf. And so the covenant with many, with this king, making the covenant with God stronger with the Jews worldwide, which is many, and it's a blood covenant. It's supposed to um, atone for the sin of the golden calf. So in other words, it's supposed to 
take away the sins of all the Jews worldwide because they've rejected the blood of their king, Yeshua, the Messiah. And they will accept another king in his place. But the same deity represented in sin, the crescent moon god, and the golden calf, and the scarlet color beast, which is a red heifer, is the same as Moloch, the one that the Hebrews worshipped and sacrificed their children to. It's the same as Baal. And you will see the same false deity as Europa and this beast that was the depicted as the bull god or the cow with the horns and that beast rising out of the sea was Zeus in disguise as a bull with horns a crescent moon horns of sin same thing as the golden calf and the red heifer and as we know if you read the book of Maccabees Zeus was the idol that was placed in the temple that desecrated it during the time of the Maccabees. It was the abomination of desolation. So you can imagine if we know that that's the abomination of desolation, what we can expect that the coming abomination of desolation is. It is the scarlet colored beast, the red heifer that came from the wilderness that atones for the golden calf incident. Now, Zeus is pictured with the harlot riding his back because he raped her, and he's rising out of the sea in the story, in mythology. And he is depicted all over Europe, all over the coins, the stamps, um, outside the Parliament building in Strasbourg, France, and other places, you'll see these kind of ghastly, ugly statues of the bull, which is Zeus in disguise, which was the abomination of desolation. And you see the scarlet colored beast or a woman sitting on its back. And sin in Mount Sinai, the woman, the scarlet colored beast with the woman on its back, she represented fertility, and sex was a big part of their ritual worship. And in the sin worship of the crescent moon god, they followed the woman's menstrual cycle by the crescent moon cycle. And they thought that her fertility cycle could bring everlasting life, which it cannot. And this kind of explains to me why they were sacrificing their children to Moloch, who was pictured as kind of a large cow sitting there with outstretched arms to take the baby and basically kill it by burning it alive, which is so despicable. God said that he never even imagined such an evil, never ordered it. Nothing. This all came from Satan, and Satan is the greatest deceiver, which is the number one name of the crescent moon god, who's also called Sin. So the man of sin is this one that is causing the other people to remain in their sin, so they will be under the law of the Torah, and the other books that the rabbis have created in their own minds, other laws, other rules that put a burden and a yoke on the people. And the red heifer cannot have ever worn a yoke and also um, not have been milked or anything like that. It has to be red. Even its eyelashes and horns have to have the reddish color and the hooves. There's a picture of a coin of Egypt 
that has Zeus disguised as the bull god with the harlot sitting on his back. because he's the beast that rises out of the sea. So he was the abomination of desolation, and I believe very likely the image of the king is going to have something to do with this uh, strengthening of God's covenant with the Jewish people through this tenth red heifer that God never commanded them to do a tenth red heifer because the Messiah is the fulfillment of the law and only the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, fills us with his life-giving living spirit to have eternal life. He came as the second perfect Adam without sin to reverse the curse of death of sin. Now Jesus told the harlot, go and sin no more. It would direct reference to the sin in Mount Sinai. And this was idolatry in the wilderness. And a lot of them stood on the side of the golden calf and they perished. They were slain by the Lord. So what do you think is going to happen in the future when the revived, resurrected Sanhedrin gets in power, puts this king as their king, and puts all the Jewish people underneath having to relive the law and try to attain it by themselves without God being the one who did it, without God being the, the, their king and being the one who fulfilled reversing the curse of death and taking us back into the Garden of Eden. So every single one of these red heifer, golden calf objects of worship, they were all these false gods. And they had different periods of time where they were called by different names. Now, Sin was one of the gods worshipped in Babylon, and they literally had a cow, a heifer, that had the mark of the crescent moon on its forehead. Now, don't you find that interesting? Whoever this usurper king is, is not necessarily a Muslim, but he's somebody that embraces all religions and re embraces that religion. And because of the fact that you must have God's Holy Spirit through King Yeshua to live forever, because he's the one-time eternal sacrifice, better than the blood of a red heifer, better than the blood of bulls and goats and rams, because it's God coming down, preparing a body to dwell in, to take the punishment and the wrath for us, so he can take us back into the Garden of Eden when we partake of his covenant with many worldwide so that he gives us salvation and takes us back into a Garden of Eden-like state forever. So the only way you can have that is through acceptance of King Yeshua and his blood covenant. And you partake of this by the Passover Seder, the wine, and the unleavened bread, which represent his body and his blood. So now I'm going to tell you a little secret, something that the Lord has revealed, and some of this stuff is in my book. Um, things have been unveiled later. So when I told you the scripture in Galatians that said, that the 
Jerusalem above is free, but the one that's here on earth is in bondage with her children even to this day. When the Sanhedrin tries to enforce the law on all the other Jews, when they appoint a king and recreate the monarchy that they have not had for centuries, the whole world is going to marvel after the beast. And Daniel told us in his prophecy that a beast is a king. Check it out in Daniel 7. A beast is a king. So they appoint a king, and then they make the whole world subject to the king. In my last video, I was talking about the extra virgin olive oil and how it was the purest olive oil that was first pressed. It was not heated, um, but it was the oil used in the lamps that were on the holy menorah in the temple. And the flaming fire was never supposed to go out. The lamp represented the Lord and his spirit. And the oil took out the impurities of the rags that had uh, been used by the priests. They would tear these um, clothing that were soiled, and then they would use them as wicks in the lampstand. So when it says that the seven churches are the lampstand, what this shows me, and this is what I wrote in my book, that the church, the seven churches, are like the seven wicks that were kind of unclean, soiled, you know, clothing, and they're dipped in the pure olive oil of the Holy Spirit, and then, you know, the flaming fire of the Holy Spirit enters them and purifies them. So here's the secret of the ten virgins parable. Five of the virgins had oil in their lamps, and they were ready when the bridegroom came. When he opened the door, they went in. The other five went to, um, well, those five told the other five who were saying, give us some of the oil in your lamps. Our, ours is going out. Well, remember that when the second temple was destroyed, the menorah would no longer light in the temple. Their light went out. This is very significant. When I was pondering the fact that those that had the oil in their lamps and had their fires burning on their lamps told the others whose lamps were going out to go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. In that time frame, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with the Lord. This is a picture of the rapture, you guys. There's no doubt about it. And I figured out the meaning of this based on what I've been telling you. And it's really stunning. Five of the virgins have the Torah, the five books of Moses. The other five have the living Torah. Those who have the living Torah, the Messiah, the true heir, the king, they receive the Holy Spirit of God that indwells in them, which is, you know, called a temple. And the Holy Spirit purifies your impurities in your life and makes you born again in new creation. So you have the pure olive oil, the extra virgin olive oil that makes you of the purest quality. And so your lamps will burn bright because you are shining the light of the Lord on the world. 
through your testimony of King Yeshua's testimony that brings you eternal life. But the other five virgins had the written Torah, the oral Torah, and they tried to enforce the law of the Torah without the Holy Spirit. They did not have the presence of the Lord through the Holy Spirit. So therefore, they were not purified because they rejected King Yeshua's covenant with many, replacing it with the red heifer ceremony of a covenant with many Jews, strengthening the ancient covenant they had with God when he made a brand new covenant with them in the blood of Yeshua, which the Bible says God has become my Yeshua. He's become my salvation, which is the meaning of Yeshua. God has become my Yeshua. And therefore, their lamps were going out. And shockingly, guess what? Those who had the oil in their lamps, which is the Holy Spirit of the purest quality that takes away our impurities, like filthy rags that are soaked in this pure oil of the Holy Spirit, spreading the gospel message of good news that he came to take away our sins, to save us from the wrath to come. So those who are making a covenant with many, rejecting the blood of Yeshua, they don't have the Holy Spirit and the purity of the oil that takes away their sins. When this Sanhedrin tries to implement all these laws, even against their own Jewish women at the Western Wall, it's going to be horrible for the Jewish people. It's going to be a time of great tribulation because they will be under the burden of having to keep the whole law. And the law was just a schoolmaster that lets you know you're a sinner and you can never attain eternal life through it. Only the Lord coming down to reverse the curse of death from sin in the Garden of Eden can reverse the curse and take us back into a Garden of Eden eternal state of living forever through the power of his Holy Spirit, which came as a rushing mighty wind upon the Jewish disciples and flaming tongues of fire sat on each one of them. There's a scripture that says that the voice of the Lord is like a tongue of fire. We know that it was God's voice breathing through the wind, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit upon them. And they were able to have the power of God to go spread the good news that God had made a new covenant with many this one was not on tablets of stone like on Sinai, but this was one that is in written on your heart. I have some incredible things about that in my book too, which is really stunning. So think about this. The five wise virgins that had the purest extra virgin olive oil, and remember the scarlet harlot, she's not a virgin. She's the opposite of that. The one riding the beast, the crescent moon god Sin, and all the other false gods, Zeus, the abomination of desolation, and all the ones I mentioned. Those were all in opposition of the one true God. But think about this. The five wise virgins that had the purest extra virgin olive oil in their lamps of the Holy Spirit because they have strengthened the covenant that God made with his people through his own blood sacrifice once and for all, which is greater than any red heifer or atoning for the sin of golden calf with a red heifer overlaid with gold that was ground to powder and the Hebrews were made to drink it after it was thrown into the spring water. They do the same thing with the red heifer. They, gr they burn it just like Moses did. They grind it to powder just like Moses did. And they put it on the people to supposedly purify them from their sins. 
Well, it can never take away sins. You know? It's just like if I picked up the Bible and showed it to you and, and said, well, here's a paper Bible. Like, it's going to save you. That's like picking up the Torah and saying, this is going to save you. But it isn't going to save you. It's the one that is the living version in person that atoned for your sin once and for all to prevent you from experiencing the wrath of God. So it's the living version, not the paper version or the oral version that keeps you under the law and still you're in your sins because that ash can never take away your sins. Only God can. He came as our Yeshua, as our salvation. He's going to appear to those who are eagerly awaiting him without reference to sin for salvation. So he's going to take us in the glory cloud because we have partaken of his bride's price with the covenant that's eternal in our hearts that he made that Jeremiah told you about in Jeremiah 31, 31. Now here's the thing. The five wise virgins tell the other five whose lamps are going out or they're running out of oil, whatever the case is. It's like the menorah that went out in the holy temple when they rejected their King Jesus, Yeshua. This is, the other five virgins have the Torah, but they don't have the oil of the Holy Spirit in their lamps because the Torah itself can never save you but those who have the five books of Moses, that's the living Torah, which is God coming down in the flesh to reverse the curse of sin and death. Those are the ones that are going to go in with the bridegroom because they've partaken of his covenant that paid the bride's price. But the other five have the Torah, the oral Torah and the written Torah but no oil is in their lamps. So they are told just before the five wise virgins go in through the door with the King Messiah, the other five are told that they're not going to uh, be given any of their oil, that they have to go get it from those who sell and buy it for themselves. And guess what? When they put a king on the throne and he starts implementing all these laws with the Sanhedrin group that is going to burden people with a yoke under the law that brings forth the fact that you're a sinner and that brings forth death and can never give you eternal life, their lamps are going out because they will have traded the true heir, the true king Yeshua, God himself that came to dwell with them to show them who he was and to reverse the curse of death, these others will accept um, a covenant with death. It will keep them in their sins because Yeshua told the Pharisees and Sadducees that if they did not believe that he was, I am he, they would die in their sins. So those who take the covenant with many, that's a replacement for King Yeshua, they will die in their sins. And it's a very serious matter because they cannot enter through the door when the bridegroom comes because they have not partaken of the covenant that Yeshua made with many with the bride's price that he did and performed at the last Passover Seder before he became the Passover lamb. So those who cannot get in through the door, it's because they've rejected their king and his eternal covenant with many that gives them eternal life. And therefore, they're under the curse of the law. They're under sin. They're 
their sins can never be taken away and not by a red heifer that atones for the golden calf incident. So that explains the parable of the ten virgins clearly tells us that the five foolish virgins were told to go to the sellers and buy. And this is something that they cannot do in the tribulation. They cannot buy or sell unless they have the mark of the king, the mark of the beast. And it's going to put them under a yoke and bondage in the worst time that history has ever known. And these are facts from the scriptures. So I'm just piecing it all together as the Lord's revealing various aspects of it. So you've got those with the living Torah that gives you eternal life, and you've got those with the Torah that it does not have the Spirit, because the Spirit descended on Jesus' disciples, and that's how the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to put it out, even though it's tried exceedingly hard. But listen to the fact of that, because those who had the pure olive oil in their lamps, and their lamps were burning brightly. When the bridegroom came while the others went to get the olive oil to burn in their lamps, they went to the sellers to buy, and they won't be able to. While they were doing that, the others went to be with the Lord. They were taken out by the Lord through the door and they went to be with the king. But the other five were foolish and so they did not get to go. They were knocking on the door, banging on it, Lord, Lord, let us in. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Whew. Wow. This is very powerful. So you can only go through the door if you have the living Torah and you have the fire of his Holy Spirit dwelling in your heart through his covenant with many. But if you trade him out for a red heifer that atones for the golden calf incident and you put the ash on your forehead or your hand or wherever you're going to put it, to try to purify the rest of the Jewish people worldwide from their sins, it isn't going to give you eternal life any more than, you know, an object can give you eternal life. It's only the living version. Moses had a copy of everything. But we have the living version and we have what Moses put as the copy. And he's the living version that gives you eternal life and breathes his life-giving spirit in you. And when you have this covenant in your heart and you die, you never die. You have eternal life. Um, no one can snatch you out of his hands. So the number five is represented in the living Torah and number five represented in the oral and written Torah. This one is the living version of God coming to dwell in a body of flesh prepared for him as the second perfect Adam without sin to take away our sin, to reverse the curse from the law that tells us that we're a sinner. It takes the yoke off of us. And so the Jerusalem above is free and the one down here is still in bondage with her children. And they'll still be in their sins if they do not believe that he is I am he. They will die in their sins because of the crescent moon God's sin. Remember, you have to accept his blood covenant with many in your heart and participate in the Passover Seder or the uh, communion that represents his sacrifice with being the unleavened bread from heaven and the wine of the cup of redemption in the Passover Seder. If you do not partake of that and you're not baptized, um, that's when you receive his spirit and you will live forever. The others that had the Torah, the five books of Moses, the 
written and oral law don't have the oil of the Holy Spirit because it's not the living version. It's just, it's just written down on stone and paper. It's just spoken through the mouth, but it isn't him himself. He is the true version that the copy was replicated from. And the only way you can go through that door is following after him. So you have eternal life. And this is the parable of the ten virgins. I hope that this blesses you beyond imagination. I thank the Lord for just being a conduit through me to be able to reveal some of these things because there's a lot more uh, revelations in my book, which, by the way, I didn't write a book to write a book. I wrote a book because miraculous things started happening. And as things were unveiling, more and more was revealed. And so I started writing it down because the Lord was impressing me to write it down. I wasn't intending to become a book author or anything like that. And it's a testimony of him as our king for the last days. The almond tree, Aaron's rod, the Messiah, king of Israel. And it's a huge volume, but it's an incredible testimony of his. That I know it would bless you beyond belief. Anyway, it's at olivepresspublisher.com and other bookstores online. Not physically in the bookstores, but it's made for you as an individual when you order it. But anyway, um, I'm just telling you that there's more revelations in it. And I had to write it down. Otherwise, I would forget it as he would reveal it. And I didn't want to lose what was being shown to me. And it was started out with a miracle that happened on Holy Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. And God told me to send a revelation I had there. And something miraculous at the happened at the same time, same hour, that I was told to send it immediately. Um, something came back to me that is the almond tree on the cover of my book. That's on Holy Mount Moriah, where that almond tree was budding and just starting to flower. So it's extraordinary, and it comes all the way through, and it ends at Mount Sinai in Arabia with Jim and Penny Caldwell who have an incredible testimony of their own. And they have splitrockresearch.org. This explains the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. And the only way you can get through the door and go off with the Lord before the other five are going to try to go to the sellers to buy and you won't be able to buy and sell unless you have the mark of the king that they put on the throne. That's going to be a global leader and put everybody under bondage and the curse of sin and death. That's why if you take the mark of the king, the mark of the beast, you will not be able to have eternal life because you will have sold your soul out for the only one who can give you eternal life. And that is, in a nutshell, the whole story. Interesting that we go through the door before they attempt to leave and go buy and sell. And when they come back, they can't get in through the door. So they're doomed. So be one of the five wise virgins that have the living Torah, not the ones who don't have his spirit that breathes eternal life in you so you can live forever. This is an important message. And, you know, I don't care if YouTube sabotages my channel every single time I post a video, give me 700 views or something stupid. I'm on here because the Lord instructed me to write a book for his glory. I wrote the testimony that he told me to write down. And the only way I can present it is to show it on my channel. And it got miraculously accepted at Harvard University Library through a Judaica endowment. I had nothing to do with that. God put it there. And 
this is a testimony for the last days. And I pray God uses it even when I go through the door. Because I'm not sticking around here to experience the wrath to come. Believe me, you are going to fall under God's wrath if you are left outside the door. It's just like God closed the door of the ark when the time had come for the destruction. And those who were in the ark were saved. They were given salvation, Yeshua. But those outside the ark were banging on the door, let us in. And they were left outside to perish. Don't be a fool. Be wise. And those are my final words for today. Man, this is, it's just unreal how the Lord's unveiling these things. The rapture is going to happen and the doors closed. And then the foolish ones will not be able to buy or sell or get oil for their lamps because their lamps are going out. Meaning, they will never have eternal life. It's extremely serious. I pray that God would draw people to listen. And, you know, I'm not on here for a popularity contest. Those who've already, you know, walked away, you know, it's like you're walking away from something that is a blessing from the Lord, you know, uh, really, you're not betraying me, you're betraying him, because I'm trying to do the will of the Father. And I'm not perfect by any means, but I'm on here because I want people to know the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, and to have eternal life. And the only way your uh, sins that are like filthy rags that go into the pure olive oil of the Holy Spirit on the holy lamp... The menorah purifies you so that, you know, you're cleansed in his spirit. So let your light shine and burn brightly because we are in the last days. And as soon as the trumpet sounds, we won't be sticking back here on the earth. As I said, don't be a fool. Be wise. And get ready so that when the bridegroom comes and you hear the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, you are ready to meet the bridegroom. Shalom for now. I'll see you in the next episode.